I know the concept of super chases is highly controversial among fans and collectors of the Disney Cars diecast line. You know, you have on one hand the people who like that scarcity added to the line. They like to be able to add something to their collection that bolsters its value. But on the other hand, you're taking very cool characters for the most part and making them much, much harder to get. They're harder to find in stores because there's only 4,000 of them produced for the entire world. And so therefore they're much more expensive on eBay as well. Probably the average price for any Super Chase is around $40 to $50. And that takes into account everything from Mater with duct tape to Crazy 8, Francis, Beltline, Cruz Ramirez to even these circus cars right here. Now, in my opinion, if you're going to make Super Chases, they have to be the best of the best. And when these came out in 2015, they were the best of the best and they still hold up to this day as some of the best releases in the entire Disney Cars diecast universe of all time. In my opinion, they're all extremely unique, colorful, and just fun. I mean, they're literally clowns. They are from the A Bug's Life cameo in Cars. I mean, you can just not get enough of the added layers that make these cars just so special to any collection. Now granted, they are very rare for the most part, some of them not as much as others, but I think, like I said, if you're going to have a Super Chase, if you're going to make a car rare, made there with duct tape, man, are you kidding me? Heck no. Cruz Ramirez with the mud, no. Those are silly Super Chases, and I guess in some eyes, Maybe better ones because then you don't have to go hunting after them and pay the exorbitant prices. All right, guys. So, yeah, welcome back to Forlorn Favorites. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. Here we have yet another drawn out intro. But, again, there's so much to talk about with the circus troop here. Of course, as I said, they appear during the credit sequence of Cars. They are the Bugs Life cameo. So, the Pixar movie A Bugs Life that came out several years before Cars 1 along with Toy Story and Monsters, Inc., were carified, quote-unquote, in the end credit sequence of Cars. You know, you had Woody in there, you had Buzz, Ham, you had Sully and Mike and Yeti, the abominable snowplow, and then, of course, you had these. Now, all the other ones I just mentioned were released within the first three years, pretty much, of the existence, of the birth of the Disney Cars line like so 2007 to 2008 they had released everything pretty much and that even includes pt flea and flick who appeared as a part of the bugs life part so for whatever reason they didn't express any interest in making the circus troop until 2010 so i guess not that long but as you might have guessed they canceled all of them in 2010 i mean it's just crazy to think about that so much was canceled in 2010. You know, Pissing Up Hollers, Pissing Up Pities, Ben Caliber, Bertha Butters Wagon, The Audubon Society, Sid Vanderkamper, and even The Circus Cars. Now, thankfully, it only took five years for Mattel to uncancel them and release them as super chases, whereas with others, they still remain canceled to this day, or like Bertha Butters Wagon took 12 years, almost 13. Pretty crazy stuff, right? Now, just to give you an overview of how these were released, of course, again, Super Chase is limited to 4,000. 4,000 pieces worldwide. Now, even though his worldwide, not everywhere in the world got these for sale. Most of them were pretty much United States exclusives. However, at times they would pop up in the UK, like I know these for sure did, sometimes in Australia, sometimes in Canada, but primarily, and unfortunately, the United States was the primary target of Super Chases in terms of Mattel's distribution. The first one they did was Blinky here. Now they do have names, all of them except for the Circus Cab have names. And this is because they were included in the Cars Daredevil Garage app, which was an app advertised on a lot of the packages during this time. You would basically scan a car that you got as an actual physical diecast car and then you could race as that car in the game. And the game showed these real names being Blinky, Honkers, Beep Beep, Clutchy, and Rimzo. But of course, they did not include the Circus Cab because I guess he was a deluxe and they didn't do really any deluxes in the game. They were pretty much all singles. Well, actually that is 
horribly, laughably wrong because Rimzo is a deluxe. So I actually don't know why they didn't include the circus cab over here. Maybe it's because it's just like an awkward size or something, but they did do Rimzo, the circus pickup who was a deluxe. Now the names on the actual packages when you find them in a store or whatever just said circus van, circus GT, circus forklift, circus sedan, circus pickup, and circus cab. So super boring. I hate that they did that, especially knowing that they did truly have names in the background and Mattel knew them because the car's Daredevil Garage app was made in tandem with Mattel. So again, Circus Van here, whose real name is Blinky, was the first one released and they released them in quote unquote twin cases. So they'd release a case of singles and they would have you know your typical stuff in it and then they'd release simultaneously for the most part the twin version of that case like they truly released them at the same time and they were very much so twins except for a little variation in the genetic code if you will one car was substituted out for the super chase so i remember this guy was in the case with Sajan Korea and M Fenderickson those were the two new releases in that case i think it was one of the first five or six of the year, it was like in May. Then you got Circus Cab, who was a deluxe, and Circus Cab is the easiest and most inexpensive, as in cheapest, of these Super Chases. Again, he was actually the first deluxe Super Chase as well, but not the first deluxe Chase. Francesco Fan Mater was the first deluxe Chase. To this day, they still have never done a Chase or Super Chase two pack though. But yeah, this guy's pretty cheap if you were to get him. There are some counterfeits on eBay from China though, so definitely look out for that. Then they did Circus Sedan, who, quite rare. However, if you know anything about you know my hunt videos or if you've seen any, for whatever reason, Disney, well, Mattel sent, and this is going to sound crazy, but I believe that they sent, if there's only 4,000 made, I believe they sent around 100 of those 4,000 to Disney World. Maybe a little less than that, but 100, which is 4%. And that is just absolutely ridiculous. That is way too much going to one place because I found like seven when I was in Disney World at one time. It was just complete luck. I was there at the right time, at the right moment, and I knew, like, I sensed the pattern. You know, I go to two stores, found them, I was like, hmm. It seems like every store, every souvenir shop in Disney World, like literally every single one, whether it be at Epcot, Magic Kingdom, or even a hotel, got in the exact same case. Hmm. Now, the case he was in was with Miles Axelrod with microphone and Paul Oakley, I believe. Yes, I think so. Or maybe it was just Miles with microphone and Manny Rodriguez or something like that. But either way... He's pretty rare. I also found one at Sears. So yeah, the Super Chases showed up at a variety of places. I never found in a store either of these two though, or Rimzo. But that brings me to Circus GT and Forklift here, who I did find one time at Toys R Us. I got pretty lucky with it, and they were just in another singles case, another twin singles case. Then Rimzo was the last one of the year, another deluxe, and he was in the case with like Trent Croto, I think it was in Larry Camper and those guys. It was the case after Doug RM, Terry Gong, Acer with Cart, and the Doc Hudson with the stand. It was after that case. And that was when they like literally made the best deluxes in the world. That was the peak of deluxes and it's gone downhill ever since. So that is the history of the Circus Troop here. Of course, they are never ever to be re-released. Mattel broke the oath in 2022 of re-releasing Super Chases, which they were not supposed to do as well when they re-released Lee Race. But I highly doubt that they would re-release a Super Chase. But then again, if you asked me a year ago, I'd probably say I highly doubt they'd re-release a Chase. So there you have it. I know that was long, but I feel like it was a lot of information that I wanted to document. And that's what we do here. We are thorough with it. We go through every possible detail. So we're gonna start just now with the review. This guy was released as a single, but one of his side view mirrors was actually removed in the blister and you had to attach it because he was too wide. This guy's really cute in my opinion. Oh, by the way, I should show a picture of them all from the movie. Probably would be a good idea. Let's not bump them together though. Yeah, 
They did a really nice job with all these. I think they're very accurate. I don't think you could do much better on any of these, but we will obviously talk about them individually here. So yeah, he's a cutie. I love the big ears, makes him look like a little mouse. Of course, he's got the red lipstick there. Kind of flesh colored with some brown. And the Stabby mirrors even are painted gray, even though they're not reflective, but they still made an effort to paint them. Now, this guy, there is a actual clown, like a circus clown, in Cars on the Road that pretty much matches this guy's model. However, they could easily use Mini, another unique model. Both of these have never been duplicated for another character, but they are different. Circus Van is a little smaller than Mini. Should it be that way? Mm, uh, probably. I'm not sure, though. I feel like they could have released... Circus Van in the same model as Mini and no one would have batted an eye because they really are like the exact same in every regard here. The windows, taillights. They do have different wheels though. Let's take a look at his license plate here. R6833. Can't read the text above it. It's pretty cool that he has just a normal license plate though. We don't see it in the movie and so I honestly didn't think Mattel would have put license plates on them. I honestly don't think it makes much sense that they would have license plates but hey that's cool. All right let's move on to GT and forklift here. There are also it's weird sedan pickup and van never showed up really on eBay from China but there were a lot of these and the cab from China. I don't think these were ever faked but I do believe that the cab was. So if you see some of these from China you're probably safe, but if you're ever unsure about something, you can message me on Instagram. I reply to all my DMs, unless you're asking me a stupid question, which happens. So both of these guys have the clown nose, the red Rudolph nose, pretty much. This guy's got more lipstick, blue eyelids, but the rest of him is yellow. And see, now he doesn't have a license plate, but he has a license plate holder, so that's a little strange. <clears throat> I like his rims. It's kind of interesting because they're like so solid except for on the edges there. By the way, his date stamp is 1755, so the 175th day of 2015. Let me guess, Circus Van, you're probably like 0735. Nope, nope. Yeah, you were produced in 2014 on the second to last day. Cool. By the way, Circus GT is not a unique model because he is just a GT. Actually, okay, so he is a unique model. He is a little bit bigger. It's funny because the other one was a little smaller, but he is a little bit bigger than these other GTs. And Mattel has made a lot. And they canceled Benny Caliper, who would have been the same model as well. So you can see here Dash Boardman, Chucky on the right, and Matthew True Blue McCrew. They are all the same size, but Circus GT is a bit bigger. He's got a little bit more junk in the trunk. Different taillights as well. It's so weird that Dash and Chucky have license plates, but Matthew does not. Gotta love inconsistencies like that. I wonder if the Thailand Matthew True Blue Micro has a license plate. I doubt it, but that would be kind of cool if they corrected that. So yeah, there's Circus GT. Here we have Circus Forklift, who's not much of a forklift. His hat is removable. So you can just take a look at this cute little pink forkliftless forklift. Just kind of missing his prongs. And he is the same model essentially as Guido. And there are a bunch of other ones as well, like, you know, Edamami Sashimi, Daishu Sashimi, the sushi chefs. I like how they both have blue eyeliner, but Beep Beeps is a little bit lighter. 1785, so these guys were actually made 30 days apart. I wonder how that happened. I think, honestly, actually, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Did I get these, like, loose or something? Oh, it's possible. I could have sworn I reviewed them, like... 
they got their own review. I also love his little like small frown right there. He's like, huh. It's like a little pouty face. Right, I think I put that on, right? Yeah, so it's a nice little fuzz ball there. Very akin to the Ferrari fan Luigi um, and Guido. Well, Ferrari fan Guido, but they all came together. Here we have Clutchy, who is my favorite of the clowns. Maybe it's because him and I established a very personal connection when in Disney World, and I found so many of them. Obviously, I bought them all because, well, it's a super chase. You have to. One time I passed a treasure hunt. I passed up on a Hot Wheels treasure hunt in like 2012. And from that day forward, I was like, I'm never making a dumb mistake like that again. But yeah, I love this guy. I absolutely adore him. I love the matte orange roof here. He's got a ton of upsplash dirt, which is a little interesting, but it makes sense because they're trekking through the, you know, literally weeds and all sorts of rubbish on the ant level size ground you gotta remember that they're all shrunken down like these sh truly should be like uber mini racers but yeah he's the only one that has like mud or anything so that's a little strange maybe he kind of got like a little pig bath or something rolled around in it but yeah lots of cool colors going on here he's got turquoise turquoise eyelids yellow side view mirrors red grill orange lipstick i love his expression too he's like <gasps> it's like a very shocked expression he's a very interesting sedan model however this is not a unique well it's not a unique license but i can tell you that but not a unique model i'm pretty sure this license plate has been used somewhere else dipstick is the text above it then 47-m for you i've seen that one before somewhere but he is the same model as andy vaporlock who was released a year after circus sedan actually oh my god they didn't I feel like I might have discovered at some point that they were not the same. I think they are though. They both have like a weird shape to them where like the engine and the hood is much larger and then it narrows down to the back where it looks much more normal back here. Just like a very strange distorted looking sedan. But yeah, they even have the same rims and these are just brown and like rusted. You think that those are like grooves in between the grill there but it's all flat just like the grill here on circus sedan clutchy same side view mirrors yeah these guys are the same oh i knew i saw that license plate before would make sense that they put it on both of the same model cars 47 m4u i honestly think it might be on another license plate as well ha ah, i knew it so there you have him Let's move on to Circus Cab here, who has a red grill just like Circus Sedan. Now this is a pretty typical semi-cab. He's probably one of the, just, I don't know. I don't wanna call him boring or anything, but he's the least unique of all of the clowns here because, you know, yeah. The side view mirrors are cool though. Of course they are exaggerated. Look like floppy, big floppy bunny ears almost. He's looking kind of sad, though. I feel like there's a hauler that kind of has an expression like this, but yeah, pretty cool. Orange top there. He almost reminds me of one of the semi-cabs from trucks from Cars on the Road because they all had like mismatched colors going on. Obviously, the ears would be a no-go and the grill is also a no-go, but the green and the orange, yeah, that reminds me of it. His license plate is R6835 axle bend or something i think it says above it and any semi cab released pretty much past like 2010 in a deluxe packaging like as a deluxe did not have a hole here anymore so like in 2008 or 2009 rather when they did no stall and rpm semis as deluxes they still have the hole here however they didn't have like the lock like the click where if you like put the hitch from the trailer into it it wouldn't click into place like it would sit in there but if you like turned it upside down like the trailer would fall out but then eventually they just closed up the hole all together and were like screw you you gotta buy the full-on hauler if you want them to connect no mismatching and so you can see here dan holland was released as a deluxe in 2018 and therefore he does not have the hole 
Mattel quickly remedied that. It's like they, you know, started releasing some semi cabs in 2008 with Mac, and then 2009 they did quite a few of them. 2010 more, but I'm pretty sure you know once they revisited it, which they didn't for a while until like 2013 when they re-released Mac as a deluxe, and then they were like done with it. So yeah, there you have that. Last but not least is Rimzo, who has another much larger clown nose here. And they are all plastic, by the way. This guy's got a really goofy expression. Like, he's been smoking the good stuff. I mean, just like, ugh. I mean, I love how the eyes are, like, not even level. <laughs> but he does look like how he does in the movie. So I guess that's pretty good. Now, this is a very cool pickup truck model. It has never been used on anything else. But it should be, like, or it could be because it is pretty much the same model truck as some of the Piston Cup crew chiefs like Trunk Fresh. Now, of course, I have a Trunk Fresh crew chief custom. I have two, in fact. Both of them use the Brian Fee Clamp model, which is this guy. And that's fine. It's serviceable. I can tolerate that. But truly, this would be the accurate model to use. I know it sounds weird to say that this like weird pickup truck model is actually correct for a Piston Cup crew chief, but it is. And if you take away the funky side view mirrors and the nose, it looks pretty normal, you know. It's just like a regular white pickup truck. But yeah, it does look pretty sweet with the orange side view mirrors. His bed back here is completely flat. There aren't any grooves like there are on pretty much every other Piston Cup or pickup truck. Like Brian Fee Clamp here or Duff Rex, who's yet another white piston cup, <laughs> white truck. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, guys. He's got white rims, again, kind of similar to Duff Rex there. Check out his license plate R6834. And this one was R6835. So those were. Clearly done in tandem, they were like, yeah, we're going to make the cab 34, or no, the cab 35, and Rimzo here 34, but they didn't follow that same style, like, they didn't number the van and the sedan like that. It would have been cool if, like, all of them were R683 and then, you know, like, 1 through 6 or whatever. Obviously, the forklift wouldn't have had a license plate, though. But the rest of them certainly should have. The GT, well, I said earlier, I don't think it makes sense that they do, but if you're going to do them, you got to be consistent. The fact that the GT doesn't have one, but he has a holder for one, and the sedan has a duplicate license plate. Although, yeah, I'm not sure if he was the first to have 47M for you, but either way, Andy Vaporlock eventually copycatted him. So there's that. And yeah, guys, these are your three main piston cup. Oh my God, I keep saying that. These are your three main pickup truck models. Even though this guy's only been used once. Honestly, I don't think they've even really used Brian Fee Clamp again. But Brian Fee Clamp is another very good piston cup. Oh my gosh. Pickup truck model that they can use for a lot of other things. Of course, you have Chris Revstopsky, who's the same as Duff Rex until they corrected her. And now she's her own thing. Wow. Lots of information in this video. I don't think I've dumped so much information in a single video in a while, but just a lot of stuff to share. And I would feel really bad if I didn't show you guys Greebles and that Circus Pity to show everyone's nose. I think that would be cool. Wow. Isn't everyone just adorable with their little red nose? Damn. Honestly, they've gotten a little worse though. <laughs> Look at how beefy these ones are. And they are like thick plastic. Like they're big too, man. Like this is a pity. This is a pity. But this guy's circumference and diameter and all the other circle math is like way bigger than this pity's little nose. I mean, that's a piddly nose. Come on, Mattel. That's a big ass nose there too. I mean, they still look cool together, but you could tell that even on Greebles, like you should have a much bigger nose. And maybe that's a little bit on Pixar, but come on, man. Nose Wars easily goes to the circus troupe. These circus clowns from Circus Velocitus and Cars on the Road are laughable. Not even close. But I have a whole, well, 
it's not really a circus troop anymore. It is the Circus Brigade. And it soon will expand. We have a ton of clown cars here now. I mean, you got Hallam Haynes, you got that plane. Of course, you got everybody from Cars 1. You got K Pillar Derev chilling back here. Not much of a clown, but Greebles and the pity certainly are. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below who is your favorite of the clowns here, the circus troupe from the end credit sequence of Cars 1. Very nostalgic, honestly. It's a great scene to rewatch because it's just, I don't know, it puts a smile on your face. I wouldn't say it would make me laugh out loud, but it definitely puts a smile on my face and I can't get enough of it. Like, I could always just sit down and watch that. And now they pretty much released every car they can from all those car fight scenes. Yeah, they did. I guess you could still do like an Increda car, which they alluded to in Cars 2. But that's a story for another video. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking through such an information dump. But hey, if you come to Mr. Docket, it's what you get. I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.